Junishi was a pathetic loser and the head of Virgins Anonymous because no girl wanted his little sausage anywhere near them. He became so desperate that he allowed his equally pathetic friends to convince him to confess his feelings to Yukuna, the class baddie. Surprisingly, she agreed to date his sorry ass which led to other girls noticing him and trying their best to get him to share his milk with them. Before that happened, school resumed for another session and Junishi didn't bother hiding his jealousy at seeing so many couples on his way to class. When he got to class, he joined his lame-ass friends in hating on the couples speaking to one another. Thankfully the hate fest was interrupted when Neem, Junishi's neighbor, walked in and handed his lunch to him. When she called him a forgetful child, Junishi argued that she looked more like a child than he did. Neem, who had a very obvious rack, told him she didn't mind her looks because she was well aware that he was into lolis. However, Junishi told her that his tastes had changed and said he now preferred his women to look like Megan the Stallion. Neem didn't like what he said, so she called him a dumb idiot and then stuck her tongue out at him before walking away. The next moment, his friends surrounded him and asked who Neem was, so he told them she was his neighbor and childhood friend. This made them demand that he introduce her to them, but he told them she wouldn't be interested in sock-loving degenerates. However, they weren't paying attention as they collectively imagined Neen in a very lewd way, and declared that her melons were God's gift to humanity. While Junishi watched the three fools, a girl named Kashiai called his attention to let him know she was glad they were still in the same class. When he turned to look at his friends, he found them happily reading adult magazines not minding the dirty looks from others. They then handed him a magazine and urged him to join them. Just as he was about to give in to the temptation, a girl suddenly walked up behind him and called out to him. Because he was startled by the voice, he dropped the magazine, so he quickly bent to pick it up as he also tried to explain that it didn't belong to him. Before he could do so, the girl whose name was Yukana stumped on the magazine and called him a disgusting pig. Later that day during break, Junisha's friends talked about how they wished Yukana had raised her leg higher and flashed them her underwear. Shinpei even suggested that one of them go after her because she was a gal, and most gals were easy prey. Junishi told them not to let their delusions mislead them because there was no way Yukana would agree to date ugly ass losers like them. However, they disagreed with him and swore that their magazine had given them tips. This was enough for Junishi to start imagining himself with Yukana, but his friends cut his wet dream short when they announced he would be the one to ask Yukana out. Junishi tried to refuse, but they insisted and held him back as Keigo ran to leave a letter in Yukana's locker. Yukana found the letter after school and went to meet up with Junishi, who was secretly freaking out that she had shown up. However, his urge to get laid was stronger than his shame, so got down on his knees and begged her to date him. <laughs> Yukana looked at him like he was a filthy dog, making him assume that he was about to become the next hot topic at school. The next moment, however, he caught sight of her panties and changed his mind just so he could look at them. Yukana noticed this and called him out for it, so he accused her of being a tease since he was embarrassed she'd caught him. Yukana squatted and told him he could look since she didn't mind him looking at it, so he tried to look again, but she used her hand to block his view and mocked him for failing for her lies. Feeling humiliated, he decided to leave, but she pulled him back, pushed him against a wall, and admitted that she liked him, after which she agreed to date him. That night, Junishi lay in bed making up nasty scenarios about Yukana as he tried to come to terms with the fact that they were now dating. The next day on his way to school, his friends met up with him and apologized for forcing him to confess to Yukana. His friends felt bad for him and promised to stick by his side even though the entire school mocked him. However, as soon as they saw he received a selfie from Yukana the promise was retracted and they told him that he was no longer their friend. Junishi tried to explain what happened, but they refused to listen to him and only wanted to know if he'd kissed Yukana. He told them it was too early to do that, so Shinpei grabbed his shoulder and told him to start thinking with his lever. He said kissing Yukana should be his priority and suggested that he set the ball rolling by inviting her to a karaoke place. Junishi didn't seem to understand why Shinpei was giving him such advice, so Shinpei gladly explained to the dense fool that karaoke was his ticket to getting laid. He swore on his life that it was a trusted method and explained what he called the three karaoke 30 rules. Later on at school, Kashiai noticed Junishi looked deep in thought and asked if he was okay and just as he assured her that he was, Yukana grabbed his hand. She then began talking excitedly about the picture she'd sent to him. When they realized their classmates were looking at them strangely, Yukana announced that they were dating. 
After school, Junishi was trying to come up with the perfect way to ask Yukana to go to the karaoke with him when he noticed his friends walking away. He immediately went after them, but they refused to talk to him and told him that they wanted nothing to do with him, simply because they didn't think he should be hanging out with a bunch of pathetic bottom tier losers now that he had a girlfriend. After they walked away, Yukana came out of the classroom and asked him to spend the day with her which he agreed to do. On their way out, they ran into Nin, who asked why they were holding hands and Yukana told her they were dating. This made Nin tear up and call Junishi a worthless jerk before she ran off, leaving Junishi to explain that she was just his friend when Yukana looked at him. They went to a karaoke place and he began freaking out a little when he noticed a sign warning against doing anything aside from singing. The next moment, Yukana walked into the room with their drinks and sat so close to him that the never-been-touched virgin began to imagine things. Eventually, he snapped out of it when he heard Yukana singing and as he listened to her, he remembered Shinpei's three rules. After she finished her solo performance, she asked him to join her and picked a song when he hesitated. Soon after they finished singing the first song, Yukana started queuing up another one and Junishi remembered the second stage Shinpei had spoken about. Yukana then told off her sweater and he tried his best not to accept that Shinpei was right about the rules. This led to him having an internal meeting with his different personalities in a rip-off version of Inside Out. They managed to convince him to man up and make a move, so he grabbed Yukana and tried to kiss her. Before he could do so, she pointed out that he had some hair sticking out of his nose. Junishi immediately backed away in embarrassment, and Yukana excused herself to go stand in the hallway looking very flushed. As they were leaving the karaoke place, Junishi begged Yukana to forget his nose hair incident, but she just laughed and told him she enjoyed their time together. A few days later, Junish found a letter in his locker asking him to come to the back of the school. However, his friends found out about this and pointed out that it was unfair he was getting letters. Junishi then agreed and went to the meeting place where he met a big plotted spray on Gal. He was surprised because he'd assumed the sender of the letter would be a cute shy girl. The girl then approached him and sniffed him after which she told him that he smelled like a spank bank. She even pushed her large melons against his chest and asked if he wanted to have a quickie with her. This question shocked him so much that he attempted to get away from her and ended up falling in the process. The girl took the opportunity to straddle him and would have ridden him seven ways to Sunday if Yukana didn't show up. Junishi got scared thinking Yukana would cut his balls because it looked like he was cheating on her. But she surprised him by smiling and asking the girl why she was harassing him, so the girl apologized. After Yukana helped her up, she introduced the girl to Junishi as her friend, Ranko after which she scolded her for not telling her she wanted to meet him. Ranko apologized and began teasing Yukana by playing with her tits until Yukana broke free and walked away with Junishi. That night, Junish received a text from Yukana inviting him to go out with her and Ranko on their day off, and he was so excited. On the planned date, they visited different places at the mall, but Ranko made Junishi feel like a third wheel. When they went shopping and tried on various outfits, Junishi found it hard to drag his eyes away from Yukana's bouncy pillows. This made her scold him, so he began apologizing and explaining himself while Ranko just watched both of them with jealousy. On their way home, they were approached by two guys asking for directions which Yukana was willing to give until they asked her to accompany them, making her very uncomfortable. Ranko then offered to go with them and they agreed after which they said it would be a great idea to get away from prying eyes. So all three of them walked away together, leaving Yukana and Junishi alone. However, it didn't take long for her to return and when Junishi asked what happened with the guys, she told him they left soon after she had a little chat with them, refusing to reveal that she had beat them up. Later on, when Junishi got home he met Ranko, who invited herself in and tried to make a move on him, but since he'd sworn to be loyal he managed to resist her. He pushed her off his body and said he wasn't a shameless cad, adding that the only person he wanted to be with was Yukana. Ranko suddenly snapped and said that he was not fit to be by Yukana's side. She ripped his shirt as she told him she would screw him until he forgot about Yukana. <laughs> Suddenly, the door burst open and Yukana barged in, catching them both off guard. However, when she realized Yukana hadn't heard anything they had said, she claimed she had come to test Junisha's loyalty as her best friend to make sure he would never dream of cheating on her which she believed. Seeing how much Yukana trusted her made Ranko reminisce about their childhood, so she apologized and began crying as Yukana told her she loved her. The next day, Ranko stopped Junishi on his way to school, and threatened to destroy his nut dispenser if he ever told Yukana how she felt about her and he promised to take the secret to his grave. 
That night, Junish sat in front of his computer doing some research on gals and happened to stumble across a live stream video that caught his attention. The next day at school, Kashi walked into class feeling like she was Taylor Swift on her era's tour because everyone greeted her. While she smiled and waved like Skipper always advised, she secretly talked shit about them in her head. It seemed like she thought she was the Queen of England and those around her were nothing but lowly servants. Her self-love party was cut short when she heard Shinpei say a greeting to Junishi, who just walked in. For some reason, she kept her attention on them as they talked about a streamer Keigo was obsessed with. Keigo swore the girl was extremely cute and pulled up a video to prove to them that he wasn't lying. Shinpei declared that the girl was an angel, and added that he had seen her somewhere before. During lunch later in the day, Junishi sat outside with Yukana and as usual began imagining scenarios that would never happen until he died. However, he immediately put a stop to his daydreams when he remembered Ranko was also sitting with them. The next moment, Kashi walked up to them and asked Junishi for help to run an errand. Junishi was just about to go with her when Ranko asked if her eyes were at the back of her head. She then told her to piss off as she was interrupting their lunch, so Kashi apologized and left them alone. When school finished for the day, Yukana left with her friends and Junishi was just about to leave as well when Kashi suddenly appeared behind him nearly giving him a heart attack. To his surprise, she took him to a cafe and he started thinking she wanted to try and play out humping the bunny with him since the cafe was mostly empty. Fortunately, she didn't have a corrupted mind and instead asked what his relationship with Yukana was to which he told her they were dating. That night, Shinpei joined the live stream of the red-haired girl again and from the shocked expression he was wearing it was obvious he'd remembered her. The next day, he called Keigo and Mainyuro to the back of the school and revealed that the red-haired streamer was Kashi in disguise. While he was still trying to convince them, Ranko suddenly popped out of nowhere and demanded he explain everything to her. Meanwhile, Kashi invited Junishi to the rooftop and confessed that she had feelings for him which took him by surprise. She also begged him to break up with Yukana and date her, but he turned her down, forcing her to reveal her inner psycho bitch. She called him a worthless dog and said he was supposed to do everything she wanted. Junishi was still trying to figure out what caused her sudden change when she showed him a video of them at the cafe. She threatened to show it to Yukana if he didn't do what she wanted and Junishi would have agreed if Ranko and his friends didn't intervene. Kashi demanded that they leave, but the moment Ranko walked closer to her and whispered her streamer's name in her ear she went mute, after which she handed over the recording to Junishi and walked away. Before leaving the roof, Shinpei confirmed to her that they were also aware of her secret. Soon after, Yukana came to pick Junishi up and walked home together with him as they talked about different things. A few days later, Junishi was having the most realistic wet dream ever, and when he reached out to grab Yukana's knockers, he woke and realized he was indeed holding onto some large globes. He quickly pulled his hands away and apologized before asking the mystery girl who she was. The girl began speaking, but most of what she said sounded like gibberish to him so she got off him and revealed she was Neen. On their way to school, she clung to him like a baby koala which made him uncomfortable. Just then, the loser gang approached them and the moment Minoru laid eyes on her he started asking very sus questions. Junishi scolded them and told them to stop using their sausages to think. But as soon as Nin pushed her bosom into Junishi's arm, they turned into post-time skip Sanji. When Junishi got to school, he ran into Kashi, who asked him to not tell anyone about what had happened the other day. While they talked, Neen walked up to them, making Kashi wonder who the overdeveloped Loli was. Neen introduced herself but decided to mess with Kashi when she noticed she was getting jealous. Fortunately, Kashi's friends called out to her before they could get into a fight. Later on, while Junishi was having lunch with Yukana and Ranko, Neen ran up to him and tried feeding him the cookie she baked. To make matters worse she noticed he had some food stain on his cheeks and licked it off. This made him more terrified than he already was because he was sure Ranko would try to defend her friend's honor by beating the shot out of him. Fortunately, Yukana recognized her and decided to introduce herself properly to Neen since she hadn't done so before. Neen accused her of seducing Junishi, but Yukana laughed because she thought Neen looked adorable trying to defend him. Yukana assured her that even though Junishi was a good-for-nothing virgin loser, she wasn't toying with him. Neen felt so annoyed that she didn't know what else to say, so she called them all dummies and ran off. That night as Junishi lay in bed, he was surprised by Neen, who crawled into his bed wearing only her birthday suit. When she began touching him, Junish had to fight his raging hormones just so he wouldn't fall for her. After he placed a blanket over her body, he told her he could never destroy their friendship for his selfish desires. His rejection made her feel sad, so she picked up her clothes and put them back on before she left him alone. 
The next day, however, she walked up to where he was speaking to Yukana and told him she'd make sure she became better than Yukana so she could steal him away from her. When Junishi walked into class later on, Shinpei showed him a magazine and asked if he'd done anything with Yukana. Junishi admitted that he hadn't, so Shinpei told him that he knew just what he needed to do. He convinced Junishi to ask Yukana to plan a get-together at her place and invite all of them so he could help him. During lunch, Yukana talked about what she wanted them to do over the summer. Eventually, he grew a pair of steel balls and asked if he could go to her place after school. This made Yukana go quiet, so he assumed he'd done something wrong and quickly explained that he wanted to invite their friends over as well. Yukana quickly changed from shy and meek to annoyed and agreed to the idea which he thanked her for even though he was too stupid to realize he'd just missed his chance to be alone with her. After school, he waited for Yukwena by the gate as he imagined all sorts of sus moments in his head. Kashi found him like that and after he pushed the thoughts aside, he told her he was waiting for Yukana when she asked why he was standing there. Kashi asked if they had a planned date and he told her they were having a get-together. After hearing his plans she told him she was free, hinting that she wanted him to invite her to the hangout, which he eventually did. When Yukana finally came out, both of them headed over to her house and after they got there she changed clothes and invited him into her room. Junishi walked in and couldn't take his eyes off her barely covered jugs, so he tried to distract himself by asking about her parents. Yukana told him they weren't home, making him regret his decision to invite the others and miss his alone time with her. Taking advantage of the fact that they were still alone, Yukana began to tease him, but Ranko, Nin and Kashi barged in at that moment. Soon after, Junisha's friends arrived and he nearly lost it when he saw Shinpei cosplaying as a low-budget Kurito and Keigo looking like a washed-up pimp. After he introduced them to the girls, they all sat down and Shinpei suggested they play the king game. Even though Junishi was a little worried, the game started fine and continued that way until Shinpei decided to switch things up. He handed Junishi the sticks after he planned everything out perfectly to make sure they all got a kiss. After everyone picked, Shinpei had the king stick and ordered numbers 3 and 2 to French kiss while number 1 kissed him. Unfortunately, he realized too late that Junishi switched the sticks and all the numbers he'd called belonged to the guys. Having no other choice, they all had to kiss one another and as they lay on the floor in embarrassment, Yukana thanked Junishi for saving them from Shinpei's sneaky plans. After that, Yukana suggested they go on a trip to the beach during their summer vacation, but Junishi and Nin said they were short on money. She then proposed they get part-time jobs and save up, which they agreed to. Some days later at school, Junishi and his friends talked about the jobs they had managed to get to save up for the trip. Shinpei and Keigo got a job at an anime store, Minoru got a job at a kindergarten. Meanwhile, Junishi has just gotten to work and realized that the girls have gotten jobs in the same place as him. As the days progressed, everyone went about their jobs happily and at some point, Ranko had to put a customer in his place when he tried to get her to touch his dong. At Shinpei and Keigo's workplace, Shinpei did so well that it impressed his boss and got him promoted to temporary manager. That evening on their way home, Yukana told Junishi that she'd like them to go somewhere without any of their friends after their summer vacation, and he happily agreed. Days later, their long-awaited beach trip finally became a reality and the boys didn't bother hiding their lustful gazes when they saw the girls in their swimsuits. Junishi did his best to keep the girls happy by playing around with them even though a few of them showed their jealousy. While Junishi had fun with the girls, Shinpei and Keigo sat with a camera taking pictures and making videos of girls in swimsuits. After playing volleyball for a while, Yukana and Ranko took a walk around the beach, leaving Junishi to build sand castles with Kashi and Nin until he noticed some guys talking to Yukana and Ranko. However, Yukana noticed him and walked over to him with Ranko following almost immediately. When they got to where he was, they thanked him for saving them from their uncomfortable situation with the guys. When they got back to their spot, they told Shinpei and Keigo to go have fun and took over. Yukana asked Junishi to rub some sunscreen on her back, but before he could do it, Ranko took off her top and asked him to do the same for her. Junishi looked a little bit too happy when Yukana took hers off and as he applied the sunscreen, he got carried away until Yukana mentioned he had magical hands. That night, while the girls were in the baths, Shinpei and Keigo pulled out some high-tech spy gadgets and convinced Junishi to go spy on the girls with them. When they got to the forest surrounding the inn, Shinpei noticed a motion sensor and asked the others to step over it, but Junishi purposely walked through it. As soon as it began beeping, he suggested that they abandon the mission but Shinpei revealed he'd been the one to set the thing up. He said he was aware that Junishi would betray them and had set it up to test his loyalty. 
They then began chasing him until Junishi fell off a cliff into the icy water below. But they didn't care and left the place. Unfortunately, they met a lot of traps on their way which made it impossible for them to finish their quest. Later on, Junishi woke up at the beach with his head lying in Yukana's lap and she told him they found him when they came to light fireworks. She also told him that Shinpei and Keigo had been found unconscious in the forest, and Minoru had a fever. Junishi apologized on their behalf and sat down with her to watch the other girls play on the beach with their fireworks. Yukana then suggested that the two of them go on a date after the trip and Junishi said it would be a good idea. The next day, they returned to the city and as soon as they left the train station, they ran into one of Yukana's middle school classmates. As she spoke with the guy, Junishi began feeling a bit insecure as he was an extremely handsome guy. Eventually, the guy noticed him standing behind Yukana and asked who he was, so Yukana introduced him as her boyfriend. The guy then introduced himself as Dai, after which Yukana said her goodbyes to him. On the way home, Junishi couldn't help but wonder if Dai and Yukana had been a couple in the past. Yukana noticed he looked distracted and asked what the problem was, so he admitted that he was jealous of Dai. He told her that she looked so good with Dai compared to him and this made her angry so she walked away. The following day at school, Junishi told his friends what happened after he and Yukana got back from the beach. Always the one with bad advice, Shinpei told him Yukana was cheating on him with Dai. He told Junishi that he could never be half the man Dai was even if he tried, making Junishi feel worse than before. The rest of the day passed without Junishi and Yukana speaking to one another. When he tried speaking to her after school, she told him she had planned to meet with her middle school friends and left. His friends then took him to a karaoke place to try and lift his spirits, but it didn't work as he just sat looking like a depressed puppy. Shinpei then advised him to do everything in his power to get his girl back after giving him a factory reset slap. On their way home, they saw Yukana inside a cafe laughing and talking to Dai which made Junishi more depressed. The very next day, as Junishi made his way to school, he wondered if Yukana had just been toying with him for her pleasure. The next moment, Yukana walked up to him, so he asked why she'd been with Dai the previous day. Yukana told him Dai wanted to speak to her about something, but he didn't believe her and accused her of cheating. Instead of defending herself, Yukana said nothing and just stared at him, so he ran off angrily. Later on, Kashi took Junishi to the rooftop and asked what happened between him and Yukana since she noticed they weren't speaking to each other. He told her Yukana had been fooling him all along, but Kashi surprised him by defending Yukana and calling him a selfish asshole. She told him that if he stopped being a whiny little bitch, he'd understand that he hadn't considered Yukana's feelings at all. Later on, as he walked home, he met Nin and she advised him to man up and sort things out. The next day, the girls met Yukana in a cafe and she burst into tears before she could tell them anything. Ranko became angry because she was well aware that Junishi had something to do with it so she left. She tracked him to the cafe he was in and tried to beat him to a pulp but stopped when he admitted his faults. After she sat down, she asked how he planned to rectify the situation. Before he could respond, Sai and his friends walked in and after they found a table, Junishi heard him admit to his friends that he was going after Yukana just so he could clap her cheeks. When he promised to pass her along to his friends when he was finished with her, Junishi got up and walked over to their table. Junishi told him not to say such things about Yukana, but Dai said Junishi was jealous because he wasn't man enough to handle Yukana. Junishi demanded that he stay away from Yukana, but Dai told him if he wanted that, he had to settle things outside man to man. When they got outside, Dai and his friends ganged up on Junishi and beat him up, but Junishi refused to back down. He grabbed hold of Dai's leg and bit him, but refused to let go of him even though he was being beaten badly. He insisted that Dai never go close to Yukana again, so Dai promised to do so if he let him go. However, as soon as he did that, Dai kicked him and bragged about all the things he'd do to Yukana as his friend joined him. The next moment, Ranko arrived and began beating Dai's friends up before she moved on to Dai himself. Shinpei and the others soon joined her and told Junishi to go to Yukana while they handled things. Junishi immediately ran off and tried calling Yukana, but she didn't pick up, so he sent her a text asking her to meet him behind the school. He waited for her there and as soon as she showed up, he got on his knees and begged her to be his girlfriend. He admitted he'd originally asked her to date him because he wanted to get laid. However, after spending time with her, he fell in love. Yukana felt moved and told him that he didn't need to ask her out again because she was already his girlfriend. That evening they went to an amusement park and went on different rides after which they took pictures in a photo booth. After an evening of fun, they talked for a while and Yukana surprised him by kissing him after which she left looking all flustered. The next day on the way to school, ran into the girls and when they noticed he and Yukana were acting strange they realized something had happened. 
They tried to get them to talk, but Yukana suddenly grabbed Junisha's hand and ran off. As the girls chased after them, Shinpei and the others watched them from their classroom window. That's all for today, thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe.